Thousands of boats carry the prestigious Mercruiser badge. But look beneath the deck and the truth gets murkier. Because some of those engines weren't Mercruiser at all, they were Yanmar. This is the rise of Yanmar, Mercruiser's biggest and most underestimated rival, a company that didn't shout, didn't rush, and didn't need to. While Mercruiser dominated the spotlight with gas-powered flash, Yanmar quietly built a global diesel empire. But they're incomparable engines, you say? Well, this video will show you why they are in fact contenders. We're uncovering how Yanmar went from Japanese rice fields to quietly shaking the foundations of the marine engine world. Yanmar's story doesn't start in a shipyard, it starts in the soil. In 1912, a young innovator named Makokichi Yamaoka opened a machine shop in Osaka, Japan. His mission was simple – help farmers. Back then, most of Japan relied on human and animal labor to work the fields. Gasoline engines were expensive, finicky, and tough to maintain in remote villages. So Yamaoka set out to build something better, something reliable. By 1921, his company took on the name Yanmar, combining his own name with Yanmar, a type of robust Japanese dragonfly known for agility and resilience. Then, in 1933, everything changed. Yamaoka's team developed the HB model, the world's first commercially viable small diesel engine. It was fuel-efficient, long-lasting, and could operate under tough conditions. For Japanese farmers, it was a revolution. But the breakthrough didn't stop at the edge of the rice field. Soon, coastal fishermen began to take notice. Japan's coastline stretches for thousands of miles, dotted with fishing communities that needed dependable power, engines that could start in any weather, survive constant salt exposure, and run for thousands of hours. Yanmar's diesels proved ideal. By the late 1930s and 1940s, Yanmar had become a trusted name not just in agriculture, but in small marine vessels too. Their engines weren't flashy, they didn't roar, but they worked every single day. And that quiet dependability, it would become Yanmar's defining trait for decades to come. Have you ever owned or worked with a Yanmar engine? Share your story in the comments, we'd love to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more deep dives into marine legends like this. Because next, we're heading into the engine room of the industry's greatest rivalry, gasoline versus diesel, and how Yanmar quietly started rewriting Mercruiser's rulebook. While Yanmar was steadily earning trust in Asia, a very different kind of revolution was unfolding in the US. In 1961, Mercury Marine launched Mercruiser, a gasoline-powered engine line engineered for speed, style, and fun. These inboards and stern drives weren't made for hauling traps or crossing oceans. They were made for weekends on the water. And Americans loved it. By the 1970s, Mercruiser had become the gold standard in recreational boating. If you owned a Bayliner, a Sea Ray, or a Four Winds, chances are it came with a Mercruiser badge. Loud, fast, and relatively affordable, they turned boating into a lifestyle. But diesel never went away. In Europe, Asia, and beyond, Yanmar's diesels were quietly powering an entirely different experience. Where Mercruiser sold adrenaline, Yanmar sold peace of mind. Fuel efficiency, simplicity, endurance. These were engines built not just to perform, but to endure. Charter companies, fishermen, and offshore sailors swore by them. They were easy to maintain, easy to trust, the kind of engine you could forget about because it simply worked. And while Mercruiser dominated the showroom, Yanmar was winning in the shadows, one slow, confident step at a time. Because sometimes, the real revolution doesn't make noise, it makes progress. And what came next? It wasn't just smart, it was strategic. This is where Yanmar stopped playing by the rules and started playing smart. In the 1970s and 80s, while Mercruiser dominated the headlines and showrooms across the US, Yanmar launched a quiet offensive. 
But they didn't do it with splashy boat show ads or dealer hype. They did it through the back door, by partnering with OEMs. Yanmar began supplying engines directly to boat builders like Williams, Nautique, and Beneteau, and even US names like Sea Ray and Hunter. These weren't retail deals, they were factory installs, and in many cases, the Yanmar badge wasn't even visible to the end customer. Sometimes the engine was clearly marked, other times it carried the name of the boat builder, or in some surprising cases, the Mercruiser brand itself. Because Mercruiser didn't build every diesel it sold, it often sourced engines from other manufacturers like VM Motori and occasionally from Yanmar. The result? Thousands of boats left the factory floor with Yanmar diesels under the deck, while buyers assumed they were running something else entirely. This OEM-first strategy allowed Yanmar to quietly infiltrate Western markets. No advertising, no hype, just consistency. Every satisfied owner, every reliable voyage added to a reputation that spread not by PR, but by word of mouth. It wasn't flashy, it wasn't loud, but it worked. And it laid the groundwork for something more direct. Because once Yanmar had earned its place in the hulls of Europe and North America, it was only a matter of time before the rivalry with Mercruiser would go from hidden to head-on. Now let's get into the heart of it, the head-to-head. -head. Mercruiser carved out its kingdom with gasoline engines built for speed. Think inboards and stern drives designed to launch powerboats, bow riders, and weekend cruisers across the water with thrilling acceleration. Their recipe? High output, broad availability, and a dealer network that stretches across nearly every marina in North America. They're fast, loud, and easy to find. But Yanmar… Yanmar plays the long game. Their speciality is diesel. Engines that range from compact 9-horsepower sailboat workhorses to 900-horsepower commercial beasts. They don't chase adrenaline, they chase endurance. You'll not only find Yanmar engines in leisure craft, but also sailboats, fishing trawlers, tugs, canal boats, long-range cruisers, the kinds of vessels where uptime matters more than RPM. Here's something most weekend boaters overlook. Diesel engines burn 20 to 30% less fuel than gasoline engines of equivalent size. On long journeys or across a full season, that fuel efficiency isn't just noticeable, it's a budget saver. And that's just the beginning. Yanmar's engines are known for their insane longevity. Many go well past 6,000 hours with basic maintenance. They're easier to service, less prone to electrical gremlins, and far more saltwater resistant. These are the engines that keep going when help is 200 nautical miles away. Mercruiser, perfect for the sprint. Yanmar, built for the marathon. But behind Yanmar's quiet rise, not everything was smooth sailing. No marine empire rises without hitting a few squalls, and Yanmar was no exception. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Yanmar hit headwinds over environmental concerns. As the world began pushing for cleaner engines, Mercruiser started rolling out newer, lower-emission gasoline models that complied with tightening EPA regulations in the US. Yanmar, however, was slower to respond. Their diesels, though efficient, weren't meeting emerging Tier 2 and Tier 3 emission standards fast enough. In the eyes of regulators and some eco-conscious buyers, that delay made Yanmar look outdated, despite their long-standing reputation for reliability. Then came the branding confusion. As discussed earlier, many boats sold under the Mercruiser label were actually powered by rebranded Yanmar or VM Motori diesel engines. This wasn't always clearly disclosed. When it came time for repairs or warranty work, frustrated owners found themselves bouncing between manufacturers, unsure of who was responsible. And if that weren't enough, Yanmar also made a bold distribution move that alienated some of its oldest allies. Historically, Yanmar relied on regional dealers and small distributors to reach customers, but as they expanded in the 2000s, they shifted to direct sales models, working straight with boat builders or selling engines directly to end users. For loyal distributors, it felt like being cut out of the loop. But here's what separates Yanmar. They corrected the course, 
quickly. They ramped up investment in emissions R&D, adopted advanced common rail injection systems, and ensured their new engines met Tier 3 and EU Stage 5 standards. Their modern lineup is among the cleanest diesel options in the market. They also clarified product labeling and improved dealer training to reduce post-sale confusion. Now, be honest, have you ever dealt with engine badge confusion or warranty drama? Drop it in the comments and hit subscribe for more untold marine stories. Up next, things are getting more interesting. Yanmar's latest tech, from hybrids to clean diesel, that's reshaping marine power. Fast forward to today, and Yanmar looks nothing like a niche diesel supplier. Their marine engine lineup is now a showcase of precision engineering and versatility, serving everyone from solo sailors to commercial operators. On one end, you have the legendary 1GM10, a compact one-cylinder diesel perfect for sailboats. On the other, heavy-duty monsters like the 6AYEM GT, powering ferries and workboats with industrial-grade reliability. But it's not just about power, it's about evolution. Modern Yanmar engines now feature common rail direct injection, electronic control modules, and lightweight aluminium construction that improves both performance and efficiency. Many also integrate with smart boating systems, allowing real-time diagnostics, smoother throttle control, and seamless monitoring. Crucially, they've addressed emissions. Yanmar's latest marine diesels meet Tier 3 and EU Stage 5 standards, making them among the cleanest burning diesel engines in their class. But Yanmar isn't stopping at diesel. They're investing heavily in hybrid diesel-electric propulsion, alternative fuels like hydrogen and biodiesel, and even exploring fully electric drives for smaller vessels. These technologies aren't just experimental, they're part of Yanmar's long-term strategy to stay relevant in a future shaped by decarbonization. Engines like the new 6LF and 6LT series are already challenging Mercruiser's biggest V8 gas engines, not just on torque, but on longevity, fuel economy, and maintenance intervals. It's a quiet kind of innovation. No flash, no slogans, just better engineering, delivered consistently. And the best part, these power plants aren't just shaping Yanmar's future, they're shaping boatings. Because what comes next isn't just about competition, it's about legacy. So why does any of this matter? Because this isn't just a battle between two engine manufacturers, it's a clash of philosophies. Gasoline versus diesel, flash versus function, legacy versus longevity. And for the first time, it's no longer a clear-cut choice. Today's diesel engines are cleaner, lighter, and more advanced than they've ever been. Yanmar, once seen as the humble workhorse brand, is now driving that transformation. Their modern lineup competes on every front. Torque, fuel efficiency, digital integration, emissions compliance, and often wins. But Yanmar's real advantage runs deeper. They've built a global production and service network that spans over 130 countries, with more than 2,100 certified service locations. Their engines power everything from canal boats in Europe to ferries in Southeast Asia and sailboats in the Caribbean. Wherever there's water, there's probably a Yanmar engine quietly doing its job. Their OEM strategy also gives them unmatched reach. By embedding their engines directly into boats from trusted brands – Journeau, Beneteau, Bavaria, and more – Yanmar isn't just competing with Mercruiser. They're potentially even bypassing them, so much so that Mercury were even forced into partnering with Yanmar for innovation purposes. But the best part? This competition benefits everyone. Because when Yanmar pushes, Mercruiser has to respond. That means more innovation, cleaner engines, longer lifespans, smarter systems, better pricing. Whether you're cruising for pleasure or working for a living, the boats get better because the competition gets stronger. And all of this from a company that started in a rice field over a century ago. This isn't just about catching up, it's about changing the course of marine propulsion. And Yanmar's not just in the race anymore, they're setting the pace. Let's close with a few facts about Yanmar that even seasoned boaters might not know. First, Yanmar isn't just a player in Japan's marine market, it's the backbone. 
Their engines power more than 70% of Japan's coastal fishing fleet, operating day after day in harsh saltwater conditions. That kind of widespread trust doesn't just come from clever marketing, it comes from performance. Second, long before the electric wave, Yanmar was experimenting. Back in the 1960s, they tested micro-gas turbines for marine use. While the project never went commercial, it showed Yanmar's commitment to thinking decades ahead. Their engines have also proven their worth in the world's toughest environments. From remote African outposts to Vietnamese riverboats, from Southeast Asian ferries to Arctic research vessels, Yanmar diesels are used where reliability isn't optional. It's life or death. And if you think they're only about working vessels, think again. Yanmar also owns a stake in Linout Racing Team, competing in endurance classes across Europe's UIM powerboat circuits. It's here that Yanmar stress tests its tech in brutal conditions, translating race-level reliability back into everyday marine engines. No ads, no big slogans, just engineering that proves itself in the real world. Yanmar may not grab headlines like Mercruiser, but they don't need to. Because while some brands chase attention, Yanmar earns it. One hour, one engine, one wave at a time. From a machine shop in Osaka to marinas and harbors around the globe, Yanmar's journey hasn't followed the usual playbook. They didn't flood the market with ads. They didn't chase the flashiest features or fastest speeds. They simply built engines that worked and kept working through salt, storms, and seasons. While Mercruiser grabbed attention with power and performance, Yanmar built quiet loyalty with endurance and trust. Today, they're no longer just a diesel alternative, they're a global force. Their engines power everything from solo sailboats to commercial ferries, from Arctic labs to racing circuits. And their vision for the future, hybrids, electric propulsion, alternative fuels, proves they're not just surviving the shift, they're leading it. The rivalry with Mercruiser isn't about one brand beating the other. It's about pushing each other forward, because when two giants compete, whether in speed or silence, everyone wins. Boats run longer, emissions drop, technology evolves, and we, the boaters, get more choices than ever before. If this story gave you a new appreciation for Yanmar or a different perspective on marine engines, hit that like button and subscribe to Vintage Boats. We've got more deep dives on the legends, rivalries, and machines that shaped boating history. And tell us in the comments, which one earns your loyalty? Mercruiser Muscle or Yanmar Endurance? Thanks for watching.